I'm Christy Hemingway, host of Ed Curation, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology and instructional coach from my district. And I'm her producer and husband, Fuzz Martin, and I am the poster child for podcasting. Oh, that's cute. Thanks. You're like sparkly about that. I was. I was. I was sparkly about it. I still am, but I was then too. (laughs) Episode 151. Yeah, 151. We are moving along. We are getting to the end of the school year, folks. Mm-hmm. Woo! I'm getting nervous, too, because uh, in your number ordering of your files for the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, mm-hmm. I only put three digits in there. Yeah. And, man, we're getting close to a thousand. I mean, we're not really close to a thousand. But uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like this will go away before we get too, yeah. too high. But, you know, someday I might uh, have to change our numbering system, and that's going to throw me way off. I mean, it'll be like We'll put like an A in now. there, like oh yeah, 101A. Yeah, that's what I do when I, screw, when I screw a file up. <laughs> like 10B. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just add a zero. 40, zero. So, yeah, we are moving through the school year. Yep. It's May. Wow. May the 4th be with you. And with your spirit. Nice. Um, and so because we are into May, which is crazy to say. Yeah. We're holding on, folks. We are holding on. Home stretch. Yeah. So this week is a really quick tool to kind of keep your kids on their toes is more or less what I feel is needed. We do a lot of sharing of information in my class. Mm-hmm. Um, I have students do a lot of individual re- research on things and I'm always looking for new and different ways to have them share their information. We all know how to make everything out of Google. Yeah. And we use a lot of Canva. We use a lot of Adobe Express. But I'm always looking for new ways to have them share their information because I like to keep them on their toes a little bit. And they don't always like me for doing this. (laughs) But because they have to learn to not be using the same tech tool all the time. Because like when you get in out in other places, it's not always going to be the same. It's not always going to be predictable. So you have to learn to solve some problems. Yep. Even though like they're very comfortable making a digital poster. Cool. Well, I'm going to give you something else to make a digital poster out of. Yep. It should be similar concepts, but everything may not be in the same place. And you might have to like. Some of the icons might look similar or. Yeah. You might have to like just venture out and try and click the button. Yeah. And it's also good too, because if you get too, you know, we're we're talking about free tools, right? And at any moment, a lot of these can go away because yeah, or they go to where you have to pay for them. Exactly. Yeah. So having a plethora of different options will help yeah. you to be flexible. Yes. And sometimes like sites are blocked or sites are shut down, you know, just all kinds of yeah. things. So this week, our quick chat is about edit.org. Well, dot org. It's an easy one to remember. Yeah. Edit.org. And it makes cool little digital posters mm-hmm. and it's kind of, the system is similar, I'm sure, to many others that you have used before. What I like about edit.org is that it has all your little, like, templates on the right side. And you just click on one and it's like, there. And then it's very user-friendly. You mm-hmm. just click on a space like, oh, you're in a text box. We're going to give you all the text features now that you can pick and choose from. And you can put little effects in there and change your border and add color and and do all the things. And look, it's there. But what I love most about this is that... <laughs> While you are working, it doesn't save automatically, which is okay. It teaches your kids to hit a save button. Sometimes in the world, there is not automatic save. Yeah. But the best part about the little save button, it flashes pink at you the entire (laughs) time until you click save. And then once you click save, it says, we've saved your copy of your designs. And then you make another edit and it flashes at you until Mm -hmm. you hit save again. So it's this great little reminder to train your kids to hit save, but also it's like flashing at you if yep. you're not paying attention. I just so, like it 
mostly because it gives you the opportunity to say to your students, back in my day, <laughs> we didn't have fancy schmancy auto save. Right. And so like mm -hmm. that's like using creating these like edit.org's digital posters, mm -hmm. they're going to have to click the save button. There's a skill they're going to have to use someplace else. And it makes them a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, so it's very cool. You can add all your pictures, change all your fonts, make all your edits. They've got photos and templates and graphics to pick from. Oh, my. Oh, my. Um, you can click and drag and everything loads right in beautifully. And kids can use them for all different topic areas. We're currently talking about World War II in my class with social media stuff. And my students are investigating Holocaust survivors. And so they're researching them and creating posters about them. So just having other options to have students share their work, mm -hmm. I always appreciate. And while you're navigating through edit.org, the tools and choices for this site are all on the right-hand side. Usually okay. the sites that I'm using, all of the tools and choices and text are on the left-hand side. Wow. So again, just subtle differences. We're yeah. still creating digital posters, but like your diagram choices, your text features, your your text box, I should say, and edits, graphics, colors, all of that's on the right-hand side. So the navigation's on the right-hand side, which I think is wonderful because it just makes you have to do something a little different. Not earth-shakingly different, just different. And then you can just shrink those tools back if you don't want to look at them. And then great way you can download your poster after you create it. You can do JPEG, you can do PDF, you can do ping, you can do vector if you choose. And then you can just download your image and then they can share it with you however they choose to, which nice. is great. Like download your thing, go ahead and you get it, which is cool. There are a few things just to pay attention to. Like you only get 10 posters for okay. free. Mm -hmm. We all know that there are ways to hold on to such things. You can save your hold designs. Hold on for one wow. more day. Create new designs. Thank you. Download Wilson. Discover. <laughs> Wilson Phillips. Is that Wilson Phillips? No. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. <laughs> um, you can search that one. And then you can also choose like designs, like how you want it set up. If you want a social poster, things like that, besides just making a digital poster, you can do so as well. So you can save, you can download, you get 10 free ones in your free little account. And then you can always come back to things too. So you just go to my designs and it will hold on to your 10 designs. And all the time it's like, hey, you should upgrade, but you can just ignore that and your students can have their free posters and have their designs saved. So yes, Wilson Phillips, by the way. There you go. Wilson uh, one thing I really like about edit.org is that you have access to millions of free non-copyrighted images mm -hmm. that you can include in your designs. And they tout themselves as the only editor in the world that offers all of its images for free. So Which is awesome. that is cool because it gives you a lot of choice. Now, as a educator, Correct. you need to make sure that those images are appropriate. Right. And keeping your kids on track. Yeah. And all of those good things. Yeah. So just note to self, mm -hmm. middle school, high school. And Probably also, if choice. you are looking, like, not just for posters and things, but if you're doing, uh, for instance, if you run your school's Instagram or oh, yeah. Facebook mm -hmm. account or you, you have a YouTube channel or anything like that, it does offer templates for those as well. So Yeah, which is always great. Like, I'm in charge of, well, there's a few teachers that we together work on our school's Facebook page. Yeah. So, like, keeping that, our Twitter page, keeping those things going. Mm -hmm. but I know sometimes, like, district, as you post things too. So there you go. Yeah. You can have cool, super fun designs that way too. And who doesn't love super fun? We love super fun. The only reason Especially we're in May. Yes, exactly. May. All right. Well, on that note, edit.org, check it out. Just mix things up a little bit. If you're doing some digital posters and having kids share their information out, it keeps them on their toes a little bit, which is always nice to give them a little challenge and have them, you know, you know, work, work for it every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Episode 151. 151. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can go to SmartNWI.com. If you'd like to support the show, please consider buying me a coffee or two. Visit buymeacoffee.com slash SmartNWI or visit SmartNWI.com and click on that cute little purple coffee cup. Your donations help keep the show going. Thanks for listening.
Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed in this podcast and the Smart NWI website are those of the author, you just heard her, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed in this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. Thank you.